Awesome. So thank you so much uh, for joining us, everyone. I hope you're enjoying React Summit as much as I am. Uh, it's been a blast so far to see the talks and get to interact with everybody. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into uh, this panel. We'll do a quick round of uh, introductions. So I am Kurt Kempel, a developer advocate at Apollo GraphQL. Uh, and I have with me, uh, let's see, I guess I, I'll go kind of in like a clockwise order starting Top left, I have uh, Phil Pluckton, who is principal engineer at Formidable uh, and also on the core team of Urkel and Styled Components. Uh, next to him is Trevor Blades, who is uh, a uh, developer, exp uh, developer experience engineer at Apollo. Uh, hey, how's it going? And then uh, we have uh, Vishwa Mehta, who is uh, DevRel at Hezura. So awesome. Thank you for joining. And we've got Scott Moss with us, uh, content creator and CEO of Type.io. Uh, how's it going, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm Trevor. I've been using React for a uh, long time and, uh, and GraphQL for uh, a little bit uh, a, a subsection of that time, but love both those technologies and, and excited to chat with everybody today. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks. Uh, Vish, what about you? Hey, everyone. Um, Corinne, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I'm Vishwa Mehta, Vish for short, and I work on the DevRel team at Hasra. Um, I've been building super cool things with um, React for quite some time, and I'm a huge GraphQL enthusiast, and yeah, super happy to be here. Awesome. So cool. And last but definitely not least, Scott. How's it going, everyone? Uh, it was a pretty good intro uh, you gave me there, Kurt, but uh, I would say cool. uh, for me, uh, I've been working on GraphQL and frameworks and stuff since, I don't know, seems like forever. Uh, I've <laughs> contributed in so many ways. Uh, I teach GraphQL and React and stuff like that on platforms like Front End Masters. Uh, and I also use GraphQL and React pretty much every single day. Uh, so just a big fan of the technology. Um, and I just want to see it you know, move even further. Awesome. Yeah. Well, as you all can tell, we have a great lineup here, uh, very uh, diverse different use cases and uh, experiences with GraphQL and React. And as such, why don't we get into some questions uh, so that we can uh, get some uh, more information and, and uh, yeah, talk about React and GraphQL. And so first up, uh, I guess for this first question, I'll just go around uh, in, in the same order again. So Phil, you can kick it off if you want. And that is, how were you introduced to the combination of React and GraphQL? And what was that experience like for you? Oh, I mean, how was anyone introduced to something like GraphQL or React? I would say it was very organic, saw it on Twitter. And working as a, at a consultancy that meant that a project that used GraphQL like, followed shortly after me becoming aware of it. I mean, I'd also like to thank uh, people like Ville, Ville Imon and Mikael Sfraxida on Twitter, because even though I wasn't working on GraphQL back then, uh, when I met them at React Native EU, actually, uh, we talked a lot about GraphQL and made me really excited for it. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's awesome. I feel like a lot of people, I I can't even remember how I found it. I think Twitter as well. What about you, Trevor? How did you discover the combination of React and GraphQL? Well, um, honestly, the time that I... Uh, around the time that I learned about GraphQL, uh, I wasn't super active on Twitter. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't find out it about it as organically as uh, as Phil did. Um, I actually I, I learned about Apollo through uh, so a recruiter reaching out to me, and I was like, "What is what is Apollo? Oh, it's has to do with GraphQL. I've heard the word GraphQL before, but I had never really like had no idea about what it what it was. So um, the following weekend, I just like converted one of my um, one of my old like side projects. It was like a skateboarding contest statistical analysis project in React with like nice. a, a custom REST API, all this like Redux craziness going on in, in the app. And I, <laughs> uh, I converted that to like a Apollo app, um, like Apollo on the front end and, and a GraphQL API on the back end. And, and like after that weekend, I was like full, full, fully on the GraphQL train. Um, so that was my my intro. Nice. And Vish, what did your story look like? Um, again, just like Phil said, how does one get introduced to something like React <laughs> and GraphQL? 
<laughs> so this is a little awkward and I don't always like to admit it, but I guess <laughs> it's how most developers get introduced to new technologies. Um, so I've been using React yeah. for a few years now and um, I only bumped into GraphQL in late 2018 when I was tinkering around with Gatsby since it has GraphQL baked into it. So I accidentally got into GraphQL without knowing um, the beauty of it or what it brings to the table for you. Um, but it wasn't until 2019 that I properly started using GraphQL with React or you know learning GraphQL properly. Um, and then I volunteered at GraphQL Asia and met all these amazing people from the community um, who were doing some awesome things with GraphQL. And yeah, that's when I started playing around a bit more with it. Nice, awesome. Uh, and what about you, Scott? What was kind of that moment that introduced you to that combination? Yeah, I was thinking about this. I was like, when did I really actually start hearing about yeah. GraphQL and using it in React? Um, I, so let me see. I was using React for a while because I used to do like some work with the the Angular team at Google, and we used to always just talk about like frameworks and, and stuff like that. So React was always on my radar. And I think at the time I was I was teaching at a bootcamp too, so I was always just like looking to see what was next. And then I think I'm pretty sure I went to some event. I ended up meeting this guy named Nick Schrock, who's the co-creator of GraphQL. And I remember him just kind of talking about this thing. And I was like, what is this guy talking about? What? Uh, and like, you know, I go look at resources and there's really not a lot of stuff out there at the time. Uh, and then like fast forward a couple of weeks, a couple of months later, and then boom, you know, there's this thing called GraphQL. So uh, I was kind of all over it. I really thought it was amazing. Um, at the time, I think Angular was like working on something like at script and they moved it to TypeScript. So like this whole type safety type check thing on the API layer seemed really interesting. Um, and then yeah. it wasn't until I started working on some like small projects where I combined GraphQL and React together. And I just realized just like how simple it was, but yet how powerful it was. And I knew I was in love. Like it just, I wasn't going back from there. Yeah. I mean, that kind of leads into the next question, which was going to be like, you know, what was kind of your favorite thing about React and GraphQL together? What was it, you know, of those two, uh, the combination of those technologies that you were just like, oh, I can't look back. Like, this is different. It sounds like for you, like the simplicity um, that it offers for development, but like also, you know, simplifying these complex uh, problems was a pretty big one. Was there anything else that like you s super enjoyed about it? Um, or was that probably the biggest benefit you found right away? I would say that was definitely the biggest one because I always approach applications, you know, not only as an engineer that's building something, but as an instructor, someone that, you know, tries to have empathy towards someone who's learning something new. And I'm always looking, I'm always thinking like, you know, how quickly, how easily, can someone pick this up and adopt this? You know, and what's what is the what are the, the difficult parts of this? And, and one thing about GraphQL and React that really made it simple was that you know you do like less transformation code. You know, like in the early days of React, there's just a lot of patterns people are doing, and you know, at the end of the day, you're just gonna throw a kitchen sink of props in a component and maybe use two of them. Uh, and you know, people get better at it. But like when GraphQL came along, it's just like wow, I could literally just take this data from an API call and throw it on the page. And not worrying about how to map it and filter it and reduce it before I do it. Yeah. You know, maybe even do some data checking on the front end because your schemas are messed up. Like you can just forget about that. Uh, it just works. And I thought that was just extremely powerful uh, because I saw a lot of my code just go out the window uh, that I was yeah. using to transform for the for the view. Yeah, I'll never forget like the first time we really uh, did some refactoring and and moving away from like REST and Redux into GraphQL and just the size of like how much code was being removed compared to how much was being added was a real pleasure. Yeah, it was real mind boggling. Uh, so followed up, I'll go in, kind of in the reverse direction. Uh, Vish, what about for you? What would you say is kind of one of your favorite features of GraphQL and React together as a combination? Well, going back to when I started with it, um, I think I was absolutely blown away by the fact that, you know, when you use um, GraphQL clients and that support subscriptions, um, in return, it gives you your application real-time capabilities. And those real-time capabilities, is well, it, it was something that, you know, really appealed to me, stood out. Um, but yeah. just uh, like apart from that, with all the GraphQL clients out there doing um, the heavy lifting for you as a React developer, I don't have to worry about, um, you know, how I'm making these API calls or about state management or caching or data fetching, which is 
something that's um, a hard problem to solve most of the times. So um, yeah, stuff like that. Every yeah. year, period. And I was using GraphQL with React. For sure. And uh, what about you, Blades? Uh, what, did, what did you find to be that like cool thing that you couldn't let go of? Yeah, for me, the 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 main thing that that drew me in initially was uh, how it like you're able to couple your your app views with the data that they require. Like it, it's it's like a it's like a really really tight relationship between the data and the um, and 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 the app itself. Um, and I thought that was nice. Uh, Scott was mentioning all of like the, the kind of the transformation code. I remember having to write these like complicated, uh, I forget what they're even called now, like Redux loop things. I, I was I was using some some um, some fancy stuff to to make uh, like asynchronous API calls work with Redux, and and it was it was crazy. Yeah. But it, it was that that was that was just like the standard at the time. Um, but yeah, being able to like tightly couple my my app and my data was really nice i like right before this i was introduced to css in in javascript and it had a similar promise and and like th that that kind of like feeling was still fresh in my mind the idea that like you don't have your style sheets over here and your app over here you have your app and your styles are just like one cohesive thing um and and so i, I felt like it was like this give me the same effect but with my data. And, and I thought that was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, what about you, Phil? Um, what's one thing that kind of stands out to you among the rest? I mean, if I have to summarize already what has been said, I like how <laughs> right. down to earth GraphQL is kind of, I, I like that it's yeah. basically nothing new. It's just conventions and specifications in that really nice language, just tying it all together. And when I think back if when I started using GraphQL, Creating a backend for a frontend for every single app you're building was already yes. really common. But you're either stuck like kind of normalizing that data, denormalizing it, doing a bit of both, writing really annoying Redux code everywhere, just dealing with your data in general. Just yeah. being able to write a GraphQL API that just caters to that exact frontend, being sure that that shape is documented and accessible, and then having clients you know, be able to do all of these amazing things with normalizing data because it's all built on convention. It's just really magical. It all comes together. It, yeah, it really is. And I feel like it's a great segue, like when we talk about data, data management and normalization uh, and stuff like this. And we also had a, a, a question from Discord, but I'm going to kind of spread it out a little bit to be more generic and not so focused, which is, uh, and maybe Phil, you can lead and we'll just go back around. Um, uh, what, what kind of solutions are out there? Like, how do you handle states between GraphQL uh, and uh, React? And what are some of your preferred um ways of doing that or what problem points do you hit essentially? Yeah. What does state management look like with GraphQL? Um, it's an interesting one, right? Because I, I've always seen data from an API as completely separate from state that a UI would have. There are a couple of exceptions in a couple of cases, form state can be pretty closely related to what your server sees eventually. Or you could even, you know, preserve some state temporarily. So like a form is half filled out, maybe you want to save that already. But yeah. for the most part, I think what's interesting is that kind of the bet from the React team on the new context APIs and hooks has just worked out perfectly with GraphQL. There are very few situations where I have to really, you know, get out a big hammer like MobX and Redux anymore. Uh, instead, a lot of data will just flow down the entire element tree from GraphQL. And apart from that, a couple of small hooks here and there for state, and maybe like, you know, some shared context is all I need. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It really changes the story of like uh, what state is is on the client alone and then yeah how you manage it what what do you have uh to follow up with that uh trevor how, how do you feel about state management with react and graphql has it gotten easier than with you know uh rest is it different what do you think yeah i mean i think that uh you know uh I, I'll, I'll reiterate what phil said i think that that uh react um like react state hooks and and context really go a long way 
Um, but th there are certain cases where I've um, I've ended up using like a uh, state management state state management with Apollo um, using like client side resolvers uh, or or like augmenting certain types uh, in my GraphQL schema um, based on something some value that I have stored in local storage with with like uh, um, type policies and uh, and those those can just be an, an extra little bit of of uh, like the, the cherry on top of an already pretty good state management story, I think, in, in present day. Yeah. Uh, Vish, you got a follow up to that? How do you feel yeah, about state management? Just, um, go off of yeah. um, Phil and Trevor's answers that um, context and using context and like traditionally we used to use local state, but then context came along and um, we have pretty good hooks. And also like yeah. I've been using Apollo for straight state management mostly. So um, big Apollo champion here for that. Cool. What about you, Scott? How do you feel about the state management story uh, with React and GraphQL? Oh, I feel like there's just more options than ever before, which is a good thing. Um, but yep. for me personally, kind of like what everyone said here, like I think the React team just did a really good job with the hooks and the context API. And I don't really find myself reaching for anything beyond those. Uh, so like in the yeah. hook ecosystem, you know, I like to use some of my favorite tools to use when interacting with APIs are things that support the, you know, SWR. So still while we validate. So packages like SWR from Vercel or React Query, yeah. uh, like yeah. those types of packages that pretty much support anything async uh, are just very phenomenal because you can kind of mix and match, you know, data from an API versus local state. Uh, you can do all different types of things there. Uh, so I kind of kind of mess with that, and, and that's been really good. Uh, and so far, you know, it's been phenomenal. And then like it also really just depends on like what framework you use and like when you're needed to make an API call, right? So like. If you're taking yeah. advantage of things like Next.js that, you know, if you're using some of their server side functions, which only happen on the server, you don't really need a caching solution, right? It's happening on the server, that code gets eliminated. You just make a simple fetch call. Uh, but if you're building a traditional spa, then yeah, you might want to invest in some type of, you know, context-based, hook-based, or even Apollo uh, to manage that state, depending on, you know, how intricate your UI is, you might have to, you know, go for something like Apollo because uh, kind of like Trevor said, you might have to do some more optimizations on local storage and stuff like that. Uh, but I would say most of the time, if you get your backend correct and it's, you know, if your backend's doing the heavy lifting of sending exactly what your front end needs, you can kind of just get by with just the context and the hooks. Yeah, and I, I do like uh, want to follow up on that, that I do love seeing kind of a wider landscape of these clients uh, from anything to like the more smaller, uh, wider focused, um, you know, React query up to like a fully managed client, like uh, you have Urkel as well, which is also a really good solution. Um, so it's just really cool to see such a, a wide variety. I always say it's a little bit about like, yeah, thinking about the needs for your app and then playing around with them and seeing which one's kind of uh, outside of that. Once you have that narrowed down, fit your, you know, your development style, team style, all that fun stuff. Uh, next question I want to get to, just because I want to make sure we get to this, and I've seen a couple of questions about this pop up. So I'm going to uh, 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 jump to this one, which is, if there was one resource that you could recommend to folks uh, who are wanting to get started with GraphQL and React, what would it be? And uh, Bish, I'm going to start with you this time, if that's cool. Sure. Um, just going off of um, how my experience has been learning GraphQL, I'd really suggest that just getting fu your fundamentals um, right with GraphQL, of course, is very important. Um, so just the GraphQL documentation is a really great place to start. Um, but if Docs is not your thing, then I absolutely love Eve Purcello's, um resources on GraphQL. She has an amazing book, Learning GraphQL. And um, Peggy raises uh, from Apollo. She also has this really cool guide that's um, that's called a front end developer's guide to um, GraphQL, and that's that also sets a primer for you. And specifically, if you want to learn how to use React with GraphQL, then um, I'm going to risk being a bit biased here, but Hasra has really cool um, has a really cool learn course uh, for React. Nice. If you want to check that out. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Uh, and then I guess I'll go like counterclockwise around. Uh, Trevor, what uh, what would be that rec that resource that you would recommend? Uh, yeah, this this took my uh, my learning <laughs> GraphQL plug. Uh, I, I I mean I think you can't go wrong with um, with even Alex there, even beyond that book. If you if you just Google um, Moon Highway, they've got tons of great GraphQL resources. Um, also, the, the Apollo front end um, or full stack tutorial, I should say, uh, is, is a good, it's relatively short, shouldn't take a lot of time, but, but it, it should acquaint you with all the basics. And, and actually, I, I'd like, um, Bish mentioned that the, uh, you know, the way that, that she was introduced to GraphQL was through, through Gatsby. And I, I think that that's kind of a good way to just kind of like get some of those like GraphQL muscles um, working like uh understand what it's like querying for static data in your in your gatsby site and then it might might get those those gears turning a little bit but um but yeah i mean there, there's a few awesome well thank you yeah thank you for sharing phil what about you what what resources would you recommend i think none of these lists would be complete without mentioning how to GraphQL, which Prisma has put, yeah. put a lot of work into. They're working, I think, on a new version right now. So I guess you have to be aware of a couple of out-of-date information in there. But I guess if you're already advanced in GraphQL, I would also recommend just straight up reading the specification. And I know that sounds horrible, but I've read a lot of web specifications and a lot of documents, and it sometimes they can be a bit confusing, but the GraphQL spec is just really clear and, and pretty, pretty brief as well. That's awesome. And what about you, Scott? What uh, what would you recommend? Uh, so many resources out there. Um, I think it really just depends yeah. on your skill level uh, and, and kind of where you are. Um, I know me personally, I've definitely taken advantage of how to GraphQL uh, a long time ago when Prism put that together. So I know it's a really good resource, really impressive. Uh, but if you're like, you know, you're, you're kind of the person that needs a guide and you need to see some context, you need to see a walkthrough, um, shameless plug here, but front end masters have yeah. really good courses on uh, GraphQL uh, to kind of break them down like front end GraphQL versus back end GraphQL. So you can kind of start with the front end, get your feet wet and then see how the back end works. Um, but also I think Assure's docs and their guys are also really good. I actually referenced them a lot. Um, I've met the nice. Assure co-founders way back when they were starting, just a really impressive team there. Uh, so I think they have some really good resources as well. So I think this really depends on, on your style. Me personally, I just read the spec. I'm just, I'm that person now where I'll just go, go to GitHub, open up a repo, and just right go to the code it. and be like, okay, uh, that's how it works. Uh, nice. But you know, I wasn't awesome. like that when I started out. So yeah, however you feel. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I believe that puts us at uh, time, uh, folks. It seems like a great place uh, to wrap up. We appreciate you joining us. Hope you found this useful and learned something new about uh, React and GraphQL. Take care. Thanks for having us. Thank you.